The rotator cuff. If I've ever heard a group of muscles that gets its name butchered, it is the rotator cuff. It is not the rotator cup. It is not the rotary cup. It is not the rotary cuff. It is the rotator cuff. It is a cuff of four muscles. Very, very important muscles to help stabilize the shoulder joint and to give us movement. All the muscles of the rotator cuff originate on the scapula. So let's get a quick lesson on our scapula. Your shoulder blade is a bone that I think is absolutely fascinating. And I'll get into all the reasons why here in a second. But first, let me tell you the proper name for this bone. It is called the scapula, which means spade. Okay, and if you look at the shape of this bone, you can see how someone might call that a spade. Your scapula makes up the posterior shoulder girdle, which is the back side of your shoulder girdle. And what I think is so fascinating about this particular bone is that it has so limited attachments. One articulation or one attachment to another bone is the humerus, your upper arm bone. And as you know, this isn't helping anything with stability. This is, this is a load. This is a free rider, the humerus. The only bony attachment that actually gives this bone any kind of stability is up here, at where it attaches to your clavicle, okay, your collarbone. And that's what's amazing, is that this bone is almost a free-floating bone, has a, a lot of different places it can go, but what keeps it in place? What keeps it stable? The 17 different muscles that attach to it. Absolutely fascinating. Now let's get into the muscular anatomy of the rotator cuff. The first muscle I'd like to show you is called the subscapularis. And this is the only muscle of the rotator cuff that is an internal rotator. This muscle originates in the subscapular fossa of your shoulder blade. So it's actually on the anterior, the front side of your shoulder blade between your rib cage. And I'm going to have a troubles getting it in here. But that's where it sticks in. It comes around and inserts on the lesser tubercle of your humerus. Your humerus is your upper arm bone. It also inserts on the joint capsule. Now your joint capsule is a tissue that surrounds your shoulder joint. Actually, you have joint capsules all throughout your body that surround the joint and hold in synovial fluid. Synovial fluid is like a lubricant for the joint. So again, subscapularis attaches to the anterior surface of your shoulder blade. The front side of your shoulder blade between your rib cage comes around, attaches to your humerus. Okay. Okay. The next muscle I'd like to talk about is a huge culprit for rotator cuff injuries, and it is called the supraspinatus. This muscle originates up here in the medial two-thirds of the supraspinatus fossa. Okay, it's right above the spine of the scapula is the fossa for this muscle, so I'm attached that there. It comes underneath your acromion and attaches to the greater tubercle of your humerus. The greater tubercles are the teres minor, uh, originates right here on your scapula, the upper two thirds of the dorsal lateral surface of your scapula. Dorsal means the backside, lateral means over towards your arm. Okay. So there's that. It crosses the shoulder joint and it also attaches to the greater tubercle and the joint capsule. Okay, so there's three of the four. The last one I'd like to show you is called the infraspinatus. The infraspinatus originates on the medial two-thirds of the infraspinosus fossa. So right below the spine of the scapula, on the top we have the supraspinatus. On the bottom we have the infraspinatus. Okay, above and below. So I'm going to attach that there. Crosses the shoulder joint and like all the other external rotators, which I'll be talking about here soon. All right, rotator cuff tendonitis, impingement, rotator cuff tears, okay? All these describe different injuries that have happened to the rotator cuff and almost all the time is the supraspinatus. As I've shown you before, the supraspinatus goes underneath your chromion, which is part of your shoulder blade attaches to the humerus. So what often happens is when we lift our arms overhead or when we do repetitive motions such as uh, pitching a ball, pitchers repetitively uh, throwing a ball, painting overhead, this is a repetitive motion. What happens is the humerus is getting lifted up every time we lift our arm up and it's pinching the supraspinatus against the acromion. Okay, when that pinching happens, it gets irritated. When things get irritated, they get inflamed, which means swollen. When you get inflammation or swelling, you get the blood supply choked out. When the blood supply gets choked out, the tissue starts to deteriorate. If a tissue starts to deteriorate, 
it tears. Rotator cuff tear. So when we talk about an impingement, that's when this humerus is pinching the supraspinatus tendon underneath the acromion, pinching it, pinching it. When we talk about a rotator cuff tendonitis, that is just means that the tendon is inflamed from being irritated. And when we talk about a rotator cuff tear, that means there's actually been tissue broken down, tissue has been torn, okay? How do we prevent this? We prevent this with rotator cuff exercises. Rotator cuff exercises help keep this humerus in the right place when we lift our arm overhead or when we do repetitive motions, okay? So uh, I'll, there's a whole gamut of rotator cuff exercises, but basically what happens when we lift our arm up overhead with a weak rotator 